Skills Dev Squad. Thanks so much for tuning into another episode with the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. KD Kevin Dorsey, uh, one of my personal favorite sales leaders. I actually worked under him uh, when he was the director of sales at Service Time. Learned a tremendous amount from him. I still follow him to this day, and uh, super excited to to have him on the podcast here. A lot of great, inspiring stuff here. But KD, thank you so much, man. Hey, no, I'm excited to be here with you, man, and see see what you're doing and where you're growing. And also, it's fun. It's the first time I've ever been interviewed by one of my reps or former reps. So you'll be able to call me out on my bullshit if I'm not telling the truth. So let's go, baby. Let's rock. <laughs> no, none of that here. But um, KD, really appreciate it, man. Uh, one thing that I really took from being a rep under your team is you're just really passionate about uh, growing and developing your team and inspiring them and and treating them more than just a number um, and, and really the person that they are. So um, you've done a lot for me and, and, and change a lot of things and, and change the way I think about things. So I really appreciate it, man. And just want to pick your brain here and, and share your expertise for all of our viewers here. But I know you're really big on messaging and especially right now, I'd imagine that's a big focus with your team, with what's going on currently with the state of the world. So just wanted to hop in and, and just learn a little bit more about um, just you know, your experience with messaging, why is it important? And maybe do you have some examples of, of some good messaging that reps could use around this time? For sure, man. And I think like messaging is still, I truly believe underappreciated and under, I guess, talked about or spoken about. And I don't, I don't understand why that is because at the end of the day, it all comes down to what is said. Like that, that, that's it, right? social selling, emailing, cold calling, direct mail, email, like it's what the message is that matters. If you have a horrible message, it doesn't matter the channel that you put it in. It's a bad social message or it's a bad email message, right? And so I think that's why I spend so much time on it is if you can get the message right, the channels start to take care of themselves, right? If you have good messaging, right? Figuring out the channel that works for it is all you need to do. Well, if you have bad, like people will blame social selling or they'll blame cold calling. It's like, maybe you just have a bad message, but no one focuses on that. And so when it comes to messaging, it's understanding your prospect way better. And most salespeople do not understand their prospect. They don't. They either got a persona card from marketing or product marketing or whatever. And that was it. Most sales reps never talk to customers ever, right? You're still selling, right? Uh, yes, I see right now, yeah. When's the last time you spoke to a customer? Not a prospect, a customer. Honestly, I can't say that I have in a while. Have you ever? <sighs> Maybe like once or twice, but that's probably about it. This is, this is why salespeople struggle with messaging, is we don't talk to the people that can actually give us the message that we need. So I guess a tip for anyone listening, here's what you have to do. Go to your CS team and ask them to speak to 20, 25 customers. And you're gonna ask those 20, 25 customers these questions. Why did you buy? What problem were you hoping to solve? What was the buying process? What were you afraid of before buying? What's changed the most since you bought? And what's your favorite part of the product? If you get those six questions answered by 25 customers, you have your script. You know what your value prop is and how they describe it. Not how you describe it, how your customers describe it. You know how they say it works. You know what objections they had in their head without telling you. That's how you build great messaging. And so to wrap on this, that carries over into current times. Most sales reps don't know how this is impacting their personas, right? Find out from your CS team, what are your customers struggling with now? If you find out what your customers are struggling with, and that also means your prospects are going to be struggling with it, now you can build proper messaging. Is that you follow me there? Like that, that's how you can bring it all together. And so like, you know, we've done it here at Patient Pop where we knew they were having a hard time seeing patients, right? Stay at home orders. So we went out, found a telehealth solution, partnered up, wrapped it up. Now we're selling telehealth out and we can lead with messaging going, we know you're having a hard time seeing patients we think we might be able to help you with that. Could we help, right? It's much simpler messaging. When you know what someone's struggling with, you can get right to the core of it and see if they're interested. Mm -hmm. 
that's super tactical. Appreciate that. So like, what's the missing piece between like talking to, to customers and like crafting up that message? Is there like a formula that you tend to stick to or something that you have found as far as just put, putting all the information together and like, how do you present that to your prospect in, in, a, in a way that it shows value and shows that you've done your research? Well, a few ways, right? Like first, you can show someone you've done your research by the quality of questions you're asking, right? So if someone, you know, was coming after me as a VP of sales, you know, asking me my biggest struggle right now is just an ignorant question. It means you know nothing about my world, right? But if you're asking a question going, hey, KD, like I know you just took 80 people from in office to remote. And I know you're a very systems based person. And a lot of companies are seeing a 17 to 37 percent drop in productivity when they move to remote. How are you handling that? Mm -hmm. Your question shows that you're an expert, right? Your question shows that you know what you're talking about. But value, you can only provide value if you know what they need. And that's where a lot of salespeople go off, right? As they try to lead with value. If you don't know anything about me, how can you lead with value, right? A lot of these emails that get sent out that are value-based emails, this is, this is all you have to ask on whether it's a value-based email. Can they use it? Are you sending me something I can actually use? Because if you're just sending information that's not valuable, if you need to send information I can use, and if I don't know how to use it, then that's your fault as a sales rep. Send me something I can use and explain how to use it. Hey, KD, I saw this study. It said blank. I think that applies to your team because of blank. Here's how other people are applying it to achieve blank. Let me know if you'd like to dive in further. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's a formula that you can use. I call it like no did found impact call to action. Here's what I know. Here's what I did because of what I know. Here's what I found out about you. Here's the impact of what I found. Here's the call to action. Here's what you should do because of what I just shared with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all. So it seems like at least for your team and your, uh, the way you kind of imagine it is most of the work that you're doing for the messaging is, is in the research alone and not really like these one trick ponies or like an email signature that grants you the meeting. It's most of the work that you do before that email that you send out messaging is the one trick pony, right? If you can find a message that piques curiosity or creates a strong emotion, that is, that's like, like, you know, back to the first question you asked me, like messaging is the one trick pony. And that's what I don't think people get. Like you can use any tool that you want. If your message sucks, it won't matter, right? So it could be a good email signature, but does it create curiosity? Maybe, maybe it doesn't right? Does it create emotion? Can you create emotion with an email signature? Maybe, maybe not, right? But that's what people forget is like, you want to try to make them feel something, right? Can you make them feel joy? Can you make them feel happiness? Can you make them feel anger? Can you make them feel fear? Your messaging needs to drive an emotion, right? That's, that's what you're really trying to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I know like you covered in LinkedIn a couple like days or weeks ago about how like, like with messaging, a lot of people think like the shorter, the better or the longer, like the worse it is. I know that you have like some opinions around this. I'd love for you to share like, like what your take is on it. Cause from my perspective, like maybe I might be wrong, but like the shorter the messaging, I feel like uh, people will just think that's like different because most of their emails are long and therefore because it's shorter it might it might be better but I'd love to hear like what your thoughts around that is so and I, I think I've probably said this to you directly before in life for the most part there's no such thing as long or short there, it's interesting or not interesting it's enjoyable or not enjoyable Right. If you wanted to talk to me about the latest episode of The Bachelor, how long could we talk about that? Very long. No, not at all. I've never watched <laughs> an episode of The Bachelor. You lost me at The Bachelor. Right. But if you wanted to talk to me about the latest developments in influence backed by neuroscience, how long could we talk about? Mm -hmm. We could go on for hours. It's the same idea even with an email or a video, right? 
back to messaging. If it's a short, shitty message, doesn't matter if it's long or short, right? But with a longer message, if you can make it interesting, but then here's the caveat. If you're writing something that's long, it has to be readable, right? If you put it in big paragraphs, they can't read it easily. And that's when they'll dismiss it. But you can have a long, readable email as long as it's interesting, right? So picture this, right? If I got an email that said, you know, hey, KD, so I've spoken with three of your managers, okay? Would that get curiosity in the very first line? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So I was speaking to them about how there seems to be some issues around getting reps to follow ABC steps. Now, the reason why it seems to be happening is it doesn't sound like there's been clear training. And I know this because I asked them X, Y, Z questions, and here's what they've said. Now, I probably don't have to tell you that if that's happening, here's how it's impacting your business. Your SCR meetings are lower, which affects your pipeline. Like, is this a long email? It is. Would that have my interest? Right? Because the whole email is about who? It's about you, the reader. Notice, right? People love to read about themselves. They don't love to read about other people. So long or short, it depends on the message that you're sending. So I mix it up. I have long emails. I have short emails, right? I have long emails that follow up a short email. I've got short emails that follow up a long email, right? I just sent you a long email. The second one is like, hey, did you read that? That's a short email, right? You can mix and match, but the messaging is what matters there. How, how would you compare a very powerful, like written, powerfully written email versus like a cold call? Like I know you're, you have a lot of like uh, ideas and opinions around this, but like, do you prefer like reps writing just like badass tailored emails versus like, you know, making dials? Like how powerful do you think this like idea of like that tailored messaging is like for the future of sales? Well, it's so to me, it's not an either or conversation. It's an and conversation. You have a cold call and you send tailored message and you do social mm -hmm. and you do video, right? Like it's an and theory, not an or theory, right? Because a good email, do you think that makes the cold call better? Oh, for sure. Right. And a cold call followed up by an email. Do you think maybe the email has a higher response rate? For sure. Right. So it's, a, it's an and mentality of like, we need to do all of those things. Because here's the other thing, like, I'm, you know, you know me, man, like cold calling will always be in my blood. My team's cold call. I believe that they should. But if you ask most buyers how they want to be get in, get in touch with, be contacted. Yeah. What would they say? Cold call or email? What would the buyer say? I would personally choose email, but that's just me. Okay. Have you ever, ever, in your career had someone be like, yo, I love getting cold call. <laughs> Never. Ever. Right. So this is, this is where salespeople's ignorance drives me nuts. Our buyers have been telling us forever what they prefer, but sales will latch on to something that they prefer. Right. The old school mentality, like, no, you dial for dollars. Right. Cause that's just what we do. Right. If I had a rep that's making a hundred cold calls a day, with no emails or a rep that's making 50 cold calls a day with 50 emails, who's going to win? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If those emails are good. Now, one thing you said though, I don't necessarily want my reps writing all these emails one off, right? Like that takes too much time. And generally speaking, let's be honest, most reps don't know how to write great emails, right? So I put a lot of time and effort into writing good emails. I also will work with another, like I work with a company called RevShop, right? They're the only company I've ever like trusted some copywriting into because they're really good at it. So anyone listening, like if you don't feel confident in writing good email copy, go hit them up. They're professionals. That's what they do, right? So then you can just focus on like the dialing, but the messaging, someone should be doing that professionally. It's not fair to the prospect or to the SDR or the AE to have to write a brand new email for every single prospect, right? So that should be coming from above a little bit. And then like with even what I told you before, a lot of the emails we write are like fill in the blanks. Here's where you can personalize. Here's where you can put in what you know about them. But then this stays the same. And then here's where you can update this, but this stays the same, right? So it's like paint by numbers a little bit. That's what allows, allows us to do kind of like personalization at scale. But then we still call, right? You opened my email, I'm calling you. 
right? You clicked on that link, I'm calling you. We have emails that are only designed to get the click. <laughs> no way. Absolutely. Why? But here we go. So this is next level shit for you. If I can get you to click that first email and get you to the website, what can marketing now do? Drip campaigns, right? Not drip yet because they didn't make opt in. They can cookie you. And now you're seeing my ads everywhere that you go. So now I'm cold calling, I'm cold emailing, I'm videoing, and you're seeing patient pop on Facebook and LinkedIn and on your Instagram. I'm everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's how you prospect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it all just goes back to really understanding and taking the time to put yourself in your prospect's shoes and understand their world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And like I work very closely with marketing, right? Because marketing generally will know messaging sometimes better than a salesperson will because they have access to more data, right? They know what people are searching for, right? So if you want a tip, right? Like find out what the highest like keywords are for your product, right? What are they searching for? Because you know what you just made? Your subject lines. You just made your first sentences. Like you know what they're searching for. So use that language back. What are the most popular downloaded white papers or case studies you have? learn that from marketing you put that into an email and you send it out right because there's data to back that the prospects like that information right so you can leverage marketing heavily in this too like it, like i'm not trying to reinvent the wheel when i came to patient pop i sat down with marketing and said show me the best ads show me the best ads what am I, i'm going to take that best ad i'm going to write an email that mirrors it there you and go that, that that even makes your job a little bit easier too for sure right like uh, it's about getting it done right it's not about getting it done like your way right and then i'll just split test it okay that ad's working how can i tweak it to see if i can make it better okay that made it better and then i can tell marketing hey this seems to be working mm -hmm. they can update the copy right so it's a, definitely it's a, a unison there of done right mm -hmm. how often do you like switch up your messaging um scripting hardly ever right like there's formulas to that and then as i learn like you know we hear something good from a rep and go "Ooh, that's good like we should add that in but like scripting is pretty formulaic email messaging always tweaking always trying different like messages like to go through because when cold calling too you don't get to talk to them that many times but emails they see frequently Right. And so you need to change that messaging sometimes too to make sure it's not just sending. Cause like it's actually been really sad to see. So obviously, like I recently went through um, some riffs at work. And so I'm getting like emails forwarded from some of my former managers. How many times I and two of my managers all got the exact same email from the exact same rep at the exact same time? Hmm. That's not account-based marketing. That's not account-based selling. That's just being lazy. You literally sent all three of us the exact same email, right? So email should be switched. I should be on a different email campaign than you. I'm the VP. They're a manager. They have different needs and wants. That messaging should not be the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. Really appreciate that. Um, a lot of good info there around messaging. I'd love to kind of switch it up a bit and take a couple steps back. Um, a lot of content that I've been seeing lately on LinkedIn with like uh, Nikki Ivy and Sahil, uh, CEO of Bravado, posting a lot of good content around, you know, just uh, minority representation in sales, minority representation in SaaS. I wanted to get your thoughts, KD, like what can we do as a community of, you know, minorities, a community of sales professionals to enable and inspire, you know, the future generation of, of salespeople or, you know, minorities in sales, you know, what, what can we do to, to help, um, you know, help the situation? So one, it's, it's going to where it matters, right? On LinkedIn, it doesn't matter. And this is why you don't see me post a lot about it. Cause that's not where our future is, right? It, they're, it, they're, we're talking amongst ourselves and that's where I get frustrated sometimes with the conversations is it's always a good topic, but we're talking to the wrong people right? It's going to the high schools. It's going there. It's going and selling them on the idea of why they should consider it as a career, right? It's going to before they've made the decisions on why they should get into sales or to tech and not even why they should, but why they can't, 
right? Growing up as a minority male, you yourself, like sometimes you get pigeonholed, you're going to be an athlete or you're going to be a hustler entrepreneur or you're going to be a record producer. And like, it just gets in, ingrained. No one on earth was telling me growing up, hey, have you ever considered being an engineer? Like that wasn't the hot topic on the block, but like, but they don't know any better, right? So it's going to where it actually matters, right? I, I'm tired of talking about some of these things with people on LinkedIn because that doesn't matter, right? I talk to high schoolers, right? Like I volunteer there, right? I do Zoom sessions there. I've done mentoring for high schoolers to see if I can't teach them because the other big part with, and this is unfortunate, a lot of, not all, so before he jumps on this and tries to like come at me, a lot of, and I, I know this because I try to hire a lot of the minority, mostly male, um, not as much female, male that come to me, they also haven't been taught how to speak properly, right? There's still too much of a, a slang or there's still too much of a looseness within the talk where if I put them on the phone, I know what's going to happen with those conversations, right? Like, it's things like that too, just how to be professional, how to have those conversations. And it's hard, but again, it starts early. By the time they're in college, it's almost already too late. By the time they're out of college, they've already made their choice, right? So it's getting involved at the high school level or early college level on why people should go into sales. I think that's the only way to solve it. You know, like making posts and things like that, it matters, but until people are actually gonna go do something about it to the people that need to hear it, we won't ever make progress, you know, mm. like that. It matters a lot to me, but I try to focus it on the people that need to hear it um, before they hear it from someone else. That's a great perspective, man. Just the, the only demographic or party that, that truly matters at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, again, like, and it's, again, it matters. We need to get more people on board, but no one actually talks about what to do. They just say, hey, we need more. We need more. Yeah, we need more. Oh, they're underrepresented. Ah, there aren't enough of us. Ah, well, go do something, right? Go talk to a group of high schoolers, right? Like I did that last year, three different high schools. Go talk to them and say, hey, this is why you should consider sales, right? Like you're like these kids, man, like they're walking up to the, you know, the restaurant selling candy bars and shit as a hustle. I'd love to hire them because they obviously don't fear rejection right? Like, I'd love to be able to hire them. But by the time they make it to a hireable age, they've already been just like, you know, taken down a different path. So that, that's how I think we fix it. It's the only way I think. Do you feel like uh, school should incorporate more sales curriculum or offer like a sales major in college? Or do you think at that point, it's still a little too late? I think they should. But the first course should be why you should be in sales because people have a connotation of what sales is, right? Like, oh, sales is, is, you know, shady, or it's, you know, you got to lie, or the rejection, right? If more people knew what sales could be if done properly, more people would get into sales. But here's the other part, right? Because this is the reality. Hey, what potential want to be salesperson? Do you want to go work a job where half of your income is based off your performance? But quick caveat, you're not going to be taught how to do your job. You're going to have to figure it out on your own. That's not very attractive. Mm -hmm. You know, like, why would someone want to get into that? Like, hey, sure, you can make all this money, but your chances of failure are high and you got to teach. Yeah. That's a really shitty value prop for sales as an industry. It, you know, you've worked for me. It's one of the reasons why I focus so much on training because I also believe that does attract people that we wouldn't normally get. Hey, come work for me and be trained, be coached on how to sell and sell the right way. It'll make a career for you long-term, long after you stopped working for me. That's part of my value prop. Come learn how to do it. That's, the, that's another way that this changes, right? Is like if people knew they'd be taught, it's a big difference, big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I, I completely agree with you. I think that's one thing that really drew me to your team uh, way back when is, is just your, uh, your desire to absolutely grow and develop your team and, and that there's a whole training process and, and things built around 
um, just getting better and then providing that foundation, which I don't feel like a lot of sales leaders or companies really do. They're kind of expecting you to come in at this level. Um, and on top of that, not really even spend much time coaching and developing you on top of that. So like, why is that such an important aspect of your culture and your team? Is, is it just what you want for your people? Are you trying to help distinguish something different amongst other organization? Like, where does that come from? I mean, I guess I just have a different view on what makes people successful. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't think if you sat down with anybody and said, hey, who has a higher chance of succeeding? Someone who was taught what to do or someone who wasn't? Like, it's a very common sense thing. It's just not common practice. And I don't know why that is. I want to hit a number. I want to hit numbers. I want to break records. I want to sell millions of dollars. It takes good people to do that. So why wouldn't I make my people good? Right? I don't, like, I can't imagine, like, oh, I'm going to go build a unicorn off the backs of people and have to figure it out on their own. Like, that just sounds dumb to me, you know? But again, it's still not common practice. Onboarding is still atrocious for most sales orgs. So many people still throw them to the wolves, you know, like sink or swim. I just don't think that's the best way to do it. So I don't, I mean, I don't think it's being selfish, but damn it, I want to win. <laughs> and I believe if I can train people better, I have a higher chance of winning. You know, I, mm. I don't think that's a backwards way to think, but it sure seems to be that way. Yeah, definitely. In your opinion, do you feel like anyone under the right mindset could be successful in sales? Or do you think it takes a particular individual um, to, to have success in sales? It depends on how we, what we mean by mindset, right? Like if by mindset, we mean character traits, like, yes, there are certain character traits you have to have to be in sales, right? You have to have a lower level of fear than other people. You have to have a slightly higher um, EQ than other people, right? And those are things that are learned through life, right? Back to the, like starting earlier thing, right? Like it does matter, right? If you did not grow up in an environment or in a home or in a school that built some resiliency, by the time I get you at 22, 23, I don't know that I don't think I can just build resiliency into you, right? That first rejection is just going to crush you. So if yeah. someone has the right character traits, yes, I believe anyone can do the sale, like this sales process. Um, and I think we miss out on a lot of people that have those character traits that never considered sales. Cause salespeople, like we love to talk, like we're so gritty, right? Like salespeople, we're gritty. No, a coal miner is gritty. Okay. These nurses that are working 18 hour shifts right now, yeah. to save people, they're gritty, right? We make a cold call. Ah, uh, they told me no. That's not grit. Like, you know, like, come on, y'all. I'm just saying, I'm not saying it doesn't hurt, but like when we try to like rally ourselves up, yeah. come on now. There are like, shoot, a, a high school math teacher in this inner city is gritty, right? Like they're not making half of what we're making. They're being fought every single day for something that they just believe in and they show up and that's grit. We miss out on some of those people because they think of sales and they aren't willing to make that jump. If we can change the story around sales, we can get some of those people, right? Like we can get, like I've had top performers that are former teachers, former pastors, right? Yeah. Former actors, right? Like actors are gritty. Some of them, not all of them. So like getting rejected every single day, putting yourself out there in front of people, being made fun of, right? Like there's a lot of gritty people out there that we miss because sales doesn't sound attractive to them and we need to change that story. Mm -hmm. I love that. I, I couldn't agree with you more, KD. And I, that's a stereotype that I'm myself am trying to challenge and fight because being an SDR has opened a lot of doors for me. And I think it's a great opportunity for a lot of other people out there for generations to come, man. So uh, it's, it's, it's great. And I'm going to have to run here, but sales is a great career. You do it the right way. Not only is it your life better, but your prospects life better. Um, I'm proud to be a salesman. I'm proud to be a sales leader. And the more people we can take care of, the better. Live better, sell better, man. That's my new, my new thing, my new phrase. That's what I'm trying to push out there. So hopefully people can buy into it. Awesome. KD, one last question before you go, man. Uh, any tips that you have for anyone out there on the job market right now just to kind of stand out or any, any advice that you have for them? Show them how good you are at prospecting by prospecting them. 
okay? Don't apply through the job board, prospect them. Do some research, write a great email, send a great video, talk to their problems and their pain points and show how you've already understood their problems and pain points that you reached out and learned. Show them how good you are at prospecting by prospecting the person that's hiring. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Great advice, KD. Uh, well, I know you got to get out of here, KD, but it was great chopping up with you. Sales Dev Squad, we will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you, KD. Later, y'all.